and welcome back to the most amazing channel on the internet. I'm your host Rebecca Felgate and today I'm talking about the top 10 scary extinct diseases that could come back. No! Back from the dead, hip hip hurrah, this is not what we want. Now before we get into this absolute plague party, I want to ask you guys what is the sickest you've ever been in your life? I don't mean sick like sick, but I mean like actually sick. God, I promise never to say sick in like a cool way ever again. It's just not me. Ah. I had swine flu once and that was probably the most ill I've ever been in my life. I was in bed for a week. It was such a struggle. Do let me know your worst moments in the comment section down below and how you got through it. Also, while you're down there, why don't you hit that thumbs up button and share this video with a friend. Also, do be sure to check out the links in our description box for our most amazing Instagrams. Now, if you find videos like this a little bit much and you want to return to lighter content like TV chat and movie chat, we have a brand new channel for all of you Netflix and chillers out there. It's called Top 10 Beyond the Screen and I think that you will love it. Head on over, say hi to our host Jocelyn and tell her I sent you. Alright, back to diseases. It's all fun and games over here at Most Amazing Top 10. Coming in at number 10 we have the Black Death. In the 14th century, bubonic plague wiped out a third of Europe's population. Plague is a bacterial disease that spreads to humans via bites from infected mice, rats or fleas, and then can be passed on by coughing and sneezing in human hosts. Plague was back again with a vengeance in 1665, but then colder weather of the autumn followed by the Great Fire of London helped stop the disease in its tracks in Europe. When people talk about plague, they assume it's a ye olde disease that doesn't affect us anymore, but the truth is, while most first world countries are plague free, some third world countries are still struggling, including Madagascar. That being said, there are still around 7 cases of plague reported each year in the United States. Coming in at number 9, we have old flu. Strange, strange, strange. This video is all about different strains. In the summer of 1977, a nasty flu was spreading through China and Russia, and then through most of the Northern Hemisphere. Weirdly, it seemed that the majority of those infected were under the age of 25. Virologists analyzed the sick and found the reason for the age trend. The flu was identical to one that had hardly been seen for more than 20 years. Those who had been exposed to it before had developed an immunity to it, but the younger generations unfortunately had no natural resistance and they'd never been vaccinated for it. It was concluded that the virus was not a naturally occurring event and actually it was the old strain back again. It had been kept in a lab all these years. Unfortunately, there had been some kind of accident in which it must have ended up being unleashed, although no one's ever admitted responsibility or even acknowledged it, which makes it even scarier. Coming in at number 8, we have diphtheria. Diphtheria can be very nasty, especially for children. It can lead to heart failure, breathing issues, death and even paralysis. The infection was most prevalent around a century ago and was one of the most common causes of death by infection. Before the 1920s, tens of thousands of people were dying in the United States from contracting the illness, but vaccination all but eradicated it. In the Iberian Peninsula in the 17th century, one year was so bad it was dubbed the Year of Strangulation as the outbreak just went from bad to worse. In 2015, diphtheria made a comeback in Spain which saw its first case in 28 years. Really sadly, it killed an 8 year old child in Catalonia. Now it does seem that his parents had decided not to inoculate their son, which is absolutely tragic. So it does go to show that it is all still lurking out there. Coming in at number Number 7 we have cholera. Cholera was a huge issue in the 1800s, especially in populated Victorian London, India and the United States. In India, a pandemic in 1817 killed millions as rice was grown in polluted water from the Ganges. Cholera is a waterborne bacteria, but since the development of proper sewage disposal and water treatment, it basically isn't something developed nations worry about anymore. That being said, South Korea can tell you just how easily it can return. In 2016, the capital of Seoul reported their first cholera outbreak in 15 years. It seems the contamination came from an import of shellfish. Now, symptoms include diarrhea, nausea, muscle cramps, and dehydration, and it can lead to very unpleasant deaths. Coming in at number six, we have smallpox. So, a cardboard box containing a vial of deadly extinct smallpox was found in Maryland 34 years after health officials declared the disease to have been eradicated. Beyond that, the last known case in the US happened in 1945. I'm sorry, but what? What was the box doing in the middle of Maryland? So back in the day, smallpox was one of the biggest killers.
numbers, ending the lives of 300 million people in the 20th century alone. Although, after it was eradicated, it seems that the government did hold some for research purposes. Now, the question is, should they do this, or when something's over, should it just be over? Smallpox was ended by a careful process of vaccination, but these days, as there hasn't been a case anywhere in the world since 1977, people are no longer vaccinated, which means if it was ever unleashed again, it could kill the younger generations very, very easily. Luckily, the smallpox found in Maryland was sealed properly and it was handled before it could become a public health risk. Imagine though if it broke out. Next up, we have an ancient disease that killed the Aztecs in a vast pandemic. Coming into number five, we have Coco Lizteli. This is actually so interesting. It seems that the ancient civilization, the Aztecs, who lived between 1300s to the mid 1500s, were just doing their thing. They were surviving and kind of thriving until the Spanish came and started messing stuff up. Not only did the Spanish come with some dubious colonizing intentions, they also brought over foreign illnesses. From 1545 to 1550, they were struck down with a mystery illness they called Coco Litzteli. This translates as pestilence and yeah. Now it seems with the outbreak of pestilence, only 1 in 10 survived. The outbreak killed 90% of the Aztec population, which is insane. From accounts written at the time, Coco Litzteli was defined by people developing a fever and blotchy skin. They then started vomiting and bleeding out of the eyes and nose. That is absolutely, honestly and truly horrendous. What this mystery illness was had a lot of historians scratching their heads, and as we know, mystery illnesses are always at risk of returning. We don't want such a deadly killer back in our midst, although recent research does seem to suggest that actually Coco Litzteli wasn't a disease, but rather Salmonella, although we don't know for sure. Coming into number four, we have ancient anthrax. I feel like I mention this all the time. In 2016, Siberia saw an outbreak of anthrax. Why? Well, there was a heat wave. What does that mean? Well, it seems that under ice, a silent killer was waiting to thaw. It seems that a reindeer who had died from an old strain of anthrax 75 years prior was frozen under the ice and as it thawed, so too did the bacteria. This led to 13 humans getting sick and one young boy actually dying. Meanwhile, a quarter of a million reindeer were culled, which is really sad. It isn't just anthrax that is an issue. Similarly, at number three, we have Pandora's permafrost. As the permafrost in the northern hemisphere is melting as a result of global warming, it seems that there is a whole host of nasties waiting to be unleashed. Now, these nasties, we may not have seen them for a very, very long time. Not only are there tons of toxic mercury under the ice waiting to poison our food and water supplies, there are so called zombie pathogens lurking and working, although not working, but waiting to work. We don't know what exactly is under there, but scientists have the foresight to be worried about it. They think that actually there may be a Pandora's box of disease under there. It seems that the anthrax unleashed in Siberia could just be the tip of the iceberg, or the tip of the permafrost. Okay, not a saying, but we should expect the unexpected. Fun. Coming in at number two, we have leprosy. Leprosy is mentioned in the Bible, which suggests that the sickness, characterized by lesions on the skin and the loss of the eyesight, has been around for millennia. The first recorded case may have been as early as around 1550 BC. Back in those days, people thought that leprosy was a punishment from God, although we now know it's a slow growing bacteria and not a curse. Obviously. Leprosy caused many millions of deaths over the centuries and was most prevalent in the Middle East and Asia. The World Health Organization aimed to eradicate leprosy in the 2000s. They almost achieved it, but it does still pop up in unlikely places, including the southern states of America. Why? Well, funnily enough, the answer is armadillos. It seems that armadillos are known carriers of the disease and have been behind a small outbreak in the United States. The US has around 150 cases. A year, but unlike in ancient times, we can actually treat and cure the killer disease. Finally, this is something we should actually be pretty afraid of. At number one, we have drug resistant bacteria, and all of it coming back and, you know, killing us. Hurrah! When penicillin was invented, it was a game changer for treating illnesses. All of a sudden, life ending infections were being tackled and survival rates were soaring. However, over the years, bacteria has started fighting back. Doctors have to be careful when prescribing antibiotics, as if they oversubscribe when they're not needed, this can cause bacteria 
bacteria to mutate. The mutated version of the bacteria can then be spread, causing an outbreak of something untreatable. There are already some strains of bacteria that have become resistant to drugs that we have. This is not what we want. Some of the bacteria that is back in action that we don't know how to treat are ancient strains of tuberculosis, which actually really, really, really wasn't great for Satine and Moulin Rouge and wouldn't be great if we had it in real life. There are also strains of diarrhea that we don't know how to cure, and again, that just sounds like a whole load of mess. Well, 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 that was the top 10 extinct diseases that could come back, and honestly, I truly hope that we never see any of these ever again. No ancient diseases for me. Just that seems like a good time to move on to comments that you left on a previous video. I'm reading comments from the top 10 scary creatures pulled from the ocean, and you had all sorts to say. EDS had a super sensible comment. They said, Blobfish only look like that because of the change in pressure. They're used to living in deep oceans under the sea in high pressure, and apparently they look quite cool when deep down. I guess they bring them up and then they're like, Bleh. I love them though. Flippy the Wonder Cat called it. They said, The deep sea is more terrifying than the deep web. Isn't that the truth? Honestly, I think I agree with you because blobfish and sea cucumbers, ah, and sharks, deep sharks. I don't know how I feel about deep sharks and anglerfish. Okay, I'm just listing fish now, but it does scare me. A lot of you guys were also very freaked out by the peanut worm, and I have to say, I hear you. Ain't nobody got time for peanut worm. So, guys, on that note, diseases and peanut worms, I think I'm gonna get on out of here. I'm your host, Rebecca Felgate. Once again, do let me know what the sickest you've ever been in your life in the comments section down below, and perhaps I'll read it out in a future video. For now, do leave a thumbs up on this video, share it with a friend, check out the links in our description box for our most amazing Instagrams, and be sure to stick around for the next video. I will see you guys next time. Bye!